in Greenwich Village, sort of the there's this lost moment in folk music history, and one of the things I love about Lewin Davis is that it takes place in that lost moment. It's the moment in between the glory days of Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie and all of that, and then the McCarthy era just essentially wiped that out. And there were still these little, sort of a new generation of true believers who really were trying to discover the real stuff and who were passionate about that, who thought of it as a completely not in terms of career move because there was no work and there was no thought that there ever would be work for anyone who played that sort of music. And by 1960, 61, right, 60 is really where, that's the winter where the film takes place, there were beginning to be a few clubs and beginning to be some sense that there might be some work. Um, but it was still very much the true believers. I mean, it was very much sort of an overlap with the beat poets. It's interesting in the context of Bob Dylan, because Bob Dylan was very much part of that tiny little group of people who had weird voices and weren't going to dress in suits and weren't going to compromise with showbiz. And it just happened that the 60s happened and that there suddenly was a world in which you could do that and become a superstar. And it did wipe out the world that's in this movie. Um, it really divided into the people who wanted to be the next Bob Dylan and the people who pulled away from that and went on to, to do other things and to just play music as a hobby, and a few people, like Dave Van Ronk, who kept grinding it out and schlepping around to the clubs for the rest of their lives. Well, Dave Van Ronk was, he was the first person to really try to do authentic blues um, on the urban folk scene who wasn't actually a black blues singer. I mean, there had been Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, there had been Josh White, but Dave was a kid from Brooklyn and Queens, who he first was a jazz musician, he always loved jazz, and then he was walking through Washington Square Park and heard a fellow named Tom Paley, who later was in the New Lost City Ramblers, playing fingerstyle guitar. And it sounded to him like stuff he'd heard on old 78s while he was shopping for old jazz. And so he learned that. And what he always wanted to do musically was find an authentic way of doing that music that wasn't sounding like somebody else. He wanted to do a book and he wanted me to help him with it. But the book he wanted to do was about the village scene, not just about the folk music. And the problem was I kept trying to get him to actually write it, and he kept trying to find a publisher who would give us enough money that he could take off a year and do that. And it never really happened, and eventually he died. And I was left with uh, probably a chapter and a half that he had actually written and some interviews I had done, and I wanted to do the book. And so I called in every interview I could find that he had ever done with anybody, called people up and said, do you still have your tapes? And everybody, um, everybody came through. Everybody gave me everything they had. And I transcribed it all. And then I wrote the book in his voice, um, using that. 